Today we're going to look at how to make a timer for how long your level's been running. We'll also look at how to turn that timer into a digital clock, like a radio clock with the 8 segment display. So, let's get on with the tutorial. First of all, I'm going to change my main camera. I have a solid colour in the background. Next up, we're going to grab a canvas. I'm going to turn it to screen space camera. Drop the main camera in here. Turn my planar distance to 1. I'm going to frame that up from the back. Make my gizmo smaller. And now I'm going to add the UI Text Mesh Pro and import TM Essentials. Now I'm going to make this. Oops, I'll look from the back. About half the size of the screen. So I'll use the top half of the screen to display the segment display and the bottom half to do some buttons for starting the timer, stopping the timer and resetting the timer. So I'm going to make this look more like the timer. I'm going to center it. I'm going to import a font which is more appropriate for this. The font I've chosen will be available for download in the bottom from the site I got it from. It's a free font and it's a digital font that has the 8 segment display. What's important when you're picking these, if you want to make it look like a radio clock, each one of the characters has to take up the same amount of space. If they don't, then they just won't go in the right place. So you need to make sure you pick a font that works appropriately for it. So to get fonts working with Text Mesh Pro, you need to go Window, Text Mesh Pro, Font Asset Creator. Drop your font up here. You can change these settings and just read the Text Mesh Pro documentation if you really want to do this. I'm just going to leave it all on the default settings. Don't worry about the missing characters. It's just simply because I picked a font that doesn't have all of the characters. I'm just going to save it in the fonts folder. Now I can drop the, this over and change my font. I might actually go even bigger than this. There we go. Next up, I'm going to create three Text Mesh Pro buttons one for start, one for stop, and one for reset. And I'm going to change the color of each one. Now I've done this, I'm going to create a script to make the timer work. And just double click it to open it in Visual Studio. First thing you'll need to do is import the Text Mesh Pro library. Next up, we'll need a reference to the text that we're actually going to change for the timer. We'll also need two variables to look after the timer. We'll need one to work out how long since the timer has started, and then a boolean variable to determine if the timer is actually running. We're not going to need the start function, so we can remove it. Let's start by writing the display timer function to actually get the time to display on the text timer. Make sure you don't use the same name as your class. So to do this, we need to get the number of minutes and the number of seconds to display. You can do this quite easily using the mathf floor to int function. But first of all, let's get the minutes. So what we're doing on this line 
is we're take, dividing by 60, which is the number of seconds, and then going down to the lowest integer that's closest to us. So for example, if you had 5.4, you would get five. Likewise, if you got 5.9, you would still get to five. But it's just gonna give you the whole number of minutes in your seconds. Let's do the seconds next. So what we're doing here is we're taking our timer, we're minusing the number of seconds that we've already used up for the minutes, and then we're just rounding to the nearest integer. So if it was like 14.5 left, it would just be 14. Now all we need to do is display this. Fortunately for us, there's a string dot format, which makes this really easy to do. Now I'll just explain what this formatting does. The first number here is referring to the variable that's here. So zero refers to minutes, one refers to seconds. If we had another one here for milliseconds, that would be two. So it's just like numbering an array. Then these digits here will say how many digits are actually going to be shown. And by having double zero, it means if there's say three minutes, it will still put the leading zero in. And over here, if it's like four seconds, it'll go zero four. It'll still allow numbers which are bigger than 99, but it will mean that you have to have at least two digits. So now we've done our display time, let's go and make our start timer, stop timer and reset timer. These are all pretty easy to do. But for the start timer, all you have to do is set your is timer equal to true. Next up, a stop timer is just the opposite, and we just make our is time equal to false. Finally, a reset timer, we set our timer equal to zero, but we also want to call display time so that if the timer is stopped, we still update the display. Finally, we need to go to our update function, and we just need to, if the timer is true, increment time and then update the display. Time.tell to time is the time since the last frame. So this is just like real time. If you want the timer to go faster, you just multiply that by the amount that you want it to be faster. We also need to remember to make this public so that we can actually put the text timer in the editor. Now let's save this and give it a go in Unity. I'm just gonna drop this onto the canvas. Now drop your text in here. Next thing we'll do is we'll make these buttons work. I'm going to select all three at once and then add the on click to them all at the same time to stop me having to go through individually. Likewise, I'm going to drop the canvas onto all three of those. Now I'm going to go through individually and add the function that's required from display time to each of these. Now let's give that a go and see if it works. And you can see now the timer is incrementing. Let's make a couple of changes to make it look more like a digital clock. First thing I'm going to do is I'm going to make the text a yellow. Depending on the colour of your digital clock, you may want to choose a different colour. Yellow is a fairly common colour for these LED segments. I'm going to go down to glow. I'm also going to pick a yellow. I'm probably going to pick a more white yellow. And now I'm going to increase my inner glow. Maybe increase my outer glow a little bit. But now you have the glow, but with one of these clocks, you can still see the outline of the segment when it's not on. So let's also add that. I'm going to duplicate this. I'm going to pull it behind it. I'm going to call it 
the text background. I'm going to hide my actual text so that I can see what I'm doing here. I'm going to change my vertex color to not black, but almost black. I'm going to go down to my glow and I'm going to reduce the opacity of this significantly. Now that I've done that, I've decided I might actually make it a tiny bit blacker. Something like that. So now once you play, you'll see that when your segment's not using up all of the bits, the other segments are kind of faded out. Like you can still see that they're there, but they're not on. I'm just going to let this run for a bit so that we can see that it works when you get over 60 seconds. So you can see it works perfectly. So that's really all there is to it. I hope you enjoyed the tutorial. If you did, I really appreciate if you subscribe, like, or comment. It helps me know if you like the video or not, and if I should make more. I really hope you enjoy your game development.